Mike, you are in AR VR industry. What is happening in 2017? What do you predict? Sure. So I like to say that we're in an iPhone 1 moment right now with VR. Um, you probably remember the iPhone 1 in 2007. Um, we're now 10 years after that. The iPhone 1, people al always forget that there were only 17 apps on it for the first year until 2008 when the App Store came out. And I always bring that up for a few different reasons. One, because you know from that point forward, there was a lot of innovation that happened in the subsequent years where a third party developer ecosystem started to do creative things built on that hardware foundation. And that's exactly what we can expect from VR in the future. And that's really kind of utilizing all of the aspects of the platforms to do cool things that weren't really thought of when VR first came out. Um, so we're talking about, again, with that historical parallel with mobile, things like, you know, everything from Pokemon Go to Uber. Um, those are things that really didn't, um, you know, w weren't envisioned when the iPhone first came out. So that level of innovation, I think we're starting to see now. Um, it's kind of hampered right now, though, with a classic chicken and egg dilemma that we often see in early stages of emerging technology. So, for example, there aren't enough apps yet to really sway the masses to buy the hardware. Conversely, there's not enough hardware out there for app developers and content creators to justify the business case of investing in all that content. So I think we're gonna start to see some of those things chipped away this year and next year with things like pricing coming down. We just saw Oculus Rift at GDC lower its pricing for the touch controllers bundled with the headset. So I think we're gonna start to see that price competition and then more content that kind of chip away at that chicken and egg dilemma. It's not only VR that we're experiencing, it's AR as well. And I heard you mentioning earlier that uh, you think AR has more potential. Yeah. How is that? And what should VR companies be thinking about sure. to be able to survive? Yeah, so AR, I think it's going to be bigger, but it's going to come later. Um, and there are a lot of technical reasons why it's going to come later. But the reason I think it's going to be bigger is that it is going to be more applicable to a wider range of commercial areas, such as commerce and retail and manufacturing and design um, and lots of other things. And there's another metric I look at as an analyst, which I call time with media per day. And we you know, spend a certain amount of time per day with media. That's subdivided with a lot of competing media like television and radio and everything. And if you look at VR in that light, it's really only tenable to be consumed for a certain amount of minutes or hours per day. And that limits its market growth. Whereas AR, we're not there yet, but eventually, because of its lesser degree of immersion, can be essentially worn throughout all waking hours. So that kind of time of media per day makes it, I think, a much larger opportunity. Now, to answer your question about VR companies, I think that there's a lot they can do um, to really innovate. And I think one of those is everyone is thinking of the more sexy tier one hardware, like the Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, PSVR. I think the nearer term opportunity is actually to develop for some of the more accessible um, formats and platforms, such as Google Daydream or Gear VR or even Cardboard. Um, and I think that those you know, are starting to get better in quality, such as Daydream, um, but also have that nice sweet spot between wide accessibility, lower cost, but still a good enough experience for the mainstream to get behind. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much.